going to be taking your uh, questions today because I have two videos this week. Uh, both of them are the new Lexus GX 550, the third generation. And I can't post those until Thursday. So um, let's let's get to your questions. Uh, what do I think of the CX70? You know what? I haven't even taken a look at it yet. Um, the uh, Mazda makes really good vehicles, and they're going upscale a bit. So my guess is that the 70 is going to be quite good. Um, but I really don't know anything about it right now because it's been off my radar screen. The last five days I've been running around uh, going down to Tucson to look at the Lexus GX 550. Um, and these videos do take a certain amount of work and research. And so uh, I've been focusing on that. So unfortunately, I can't answer that question about the Mazda Let's go to, hi, Greg. Um, oh, the CX-90. Um, you know what? Again, I don't know. Sorry. Um, I've got a new setup, so bear with me. Um, what do you think of Tesla Model Y? Would I buy this over an Acura RDX, A-Spec? Uh, really two different vehicles. Um, I know that the Model Y has performance at all. Um, I do like the RDX. It's a good vehicle. The only thing that I don't like about Acura vehicles are the trackpad. Um, I don't like their interface all that much. Again, I haven't lived with it. Owners might get used to it. I'm not so crazy about it, but I love their performance. And if you can get the ELS Studio 3D sound system, literally, regardless of price, one of my favorite audio systems in the entire world, um, especially if you're using the right files. I take my music very, very seriously. I love that. And unfortunately, Acura is getting rid of that. They're going to, I believe, Bang & Olufsen. Um, dang. Um, oh, well. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, what do I think about the Mitsubishi Outlander and no starting when it's cold? Yikes. Um, it's been a long time since I've lived in Minnesota. So that I don't have any uh I don't have any advice for. Um have you tried using a jump pack and putting that on the 12 volt? I know that sounds silly, but even electric cars rely on a 12 volt system. So sometimes you need to take a look at that. Um, that's the only advice that I have for you um, since I am not an Outlander owner. Sorry about that. Uh, hi, Christopher, you're tall. Oh, Henry. Thank you. I'm going to get to you in just a second, but I started in on Henry. Um, uh, let's see. I have not, unfortunately, no. Um, I have not done the MK8 Golf, um, unfortunately, no. Uh, boy, um, my new setup is kind of messed up, but I'm sorry I'm looking over here all the time, but this is where my feed is coming from. Um, Christopher, you need to get rid of your Polestar 2 for an EV that fits two car seats. Any advice? Uh, you know what? Here's my advice. Take your car seats and go to all the different dealerships. Um, I would say, uh, take a look at Cadillac Lyric, which has a very roomy back seat. I would say EV, or I'm sorry, Ionic 5, um, also quite good. I think the uh, EV6 has a bit of a cramped back seat. At least the, the, the door openings are on the smaller side. There's so many different EVs coming out. Um, I have seen the new Honda Prologue, and it appears to have a larger back seat and and bigger windows in the back. But um, my best advice really is take those car seats and go dealership to dealership, unfortunately. Or if there's an auto show around, go to the auto show um, and bring your car seat. I know it's a hassle, but it'll save a lot of time. 
All right. Uh, Henry Park, thank you very much. Um, this is a small independent boutique car channel. Uh, Martin Campbell and I work very, very hard to give you guys the best information we can. Also, good photography. I feel like by giving you all of that sort of stuff, it makes car shopping a little bit easier. Um, and people just like to watch the reviews because they like to watch the reviews. Um, also, watch these on your television. I am a former NBC News photographer, and it's really important for me to give you guys the best visuals possible. They do look great on a 4K TV. I make sure of that. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Aaron, what's my take on most brands go full electric only in the next couple of years? Here's my take on that. I don't think it's going to happen. You know, what's happening with the government mandate that all vehicles go electric by 30 or 20, 2035 is that's a target, right? I mean, everybody's trying to make that target um, because we do need to do something about the environment. Clearly, things are changing. But the reality is not everybody can drive an EV at this point, right? Um, it's really best if you charge where you sleep. And if there aren't enough chargers built, and that's the case right now, it's just not going to happen. I really see the movement towards electric vehicles. Uh, for one thing, in many respects, EVs have huge advantages over gasoline-powered cars. I drive all of these different uh, vehicles, so I know this to be true. The torque is amazing. Everybody wants a quiet, comfortable, you know, smooth car. Electric vehicles give you that. But here's the deal. They just aren't right for everybody. So the government is trying to incentivize everybody going that way. But it's going to take time. I really believe it's going to take longer. Um, so I don't think it's going to happen in the next couple of years. There are a few brands that might achieve that. But the vast majority, personally, my opinion, that's not going to happen. All right. Uh, yes, the Volvo b &O systems are quite good. I, I really like them. Um, uh, Henry, I hope you make a de decision. What did you buy? I'm, I'm curious and I, and I hope you're happy uh, because at the end of the day, these are my opinions. Um, and I really do try to look at everybody, you know, and how they, how they use a car, but you know, I'm one person and I, I do have my, you know, my preferences. Ah, it's been a week, guys, so I'm not going to be completely smooth. It really has. I've been getting about five, six hours of sleep uh, every night. So, ugh. Um, IS, thanks. Thanks for the uh, for the super thanks. Really do appreciate it. Again, uh, YouTube doesn't really pay very well, and I don't like to ask for money. I don't like doing the NPR uh, kind of thing. But you know what? Um this channel is powered by viewers like you. <laughs> it really is. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you know when Toyota is bringing back the Prius C and plus V? Uh, when? I think you probably mean if. And my guess is they're not. Um, because the Prius V, uh, the larger one, is probably, you know, the, the, the RAV4 really takes the 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 place of that and and americans they don't like small cars i personally like small cars i have an original year miata that i bought new um and i love that car i like cars that you wear like a jetpack uh i don't think the prius c or the prius v are coming back that that's you know from everything that i've heard from toyota uh Let's see. Da, da, da. Oh, you got the RDX. X. Okay. Great. Um, 
Any update on my electric vehicle purchase? Okay, so I have it narrowed down to three. Um, I'll, I'll let you guys in on it. And I'm going to be making dozens of videos. Um, one video is the way, uh, the, the, the reason why I chose the car that I did. But the three that I've narrowed it down to are, one, a used Porsche Taycan um, 4S. Got to have a 4S because I want all-wheel drive. Um, and I've found a number of them all around the country. They're actually fairly reasonably priced. Um, I also like the Hyundai Ioniq 6. Um, that car really works for me. The only thing I don't like about it is the trunk is kind of small and I carry a lot of camera gear because I do freelance work. And so that's not so practical. Uh, not that a Cadillac ELR is, that thing's got a horrible trunk. Um, and then the last one would be uh, the Cadillac Lyric, which um, they're starting to pump those out in volume now. I was at a dealership the other day and the salesperson there said that they got 29 in last week. Finally, General Motors is pumping out the Ultium batteries. I guess they've got that, that pipeline filling up now. Um, so uh, I'm going to be making that decision in the next week or two, I think. Um, also, I'm installing level two charging in my house, and it's going to cost a fortune because my house is up on a hill uh, far away from my detached garage which is concrete and set into the side of a hill. Uh, it's going to be a tough situation. The, electro, uh, the electrician is coming out tomorrow to look at my panel and see how far we have to dig to bury the cable. Not going to be fun. All right. Uh, waiting for my Bugatti Chiron review. Uh, yeah, you're going to be waiting a while. Um, I don't typically get cars like that. Since I'm no longer with the New York Times, um, I have kind of fallen off that gravy wagon. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. Gravy train. Uh, next one. You have a 22 Honda Accord Hybrid. Seeing the 2025, it's tempting to switch. Um, Aaron, why? Why would you switch? I'm, I'm curious. Um, the Honda Accord is a brilliant car. Um, I really like the hybrid. And so, you know, if you look at the current generation Camry, it looks pretty much exactly the same. Um, from the side profile, they haven't changed the sheet metal or the greenhouse at all. It's got a new front fascia, I think a new back bumper and a new interior. So um, you could have bought the other Toyota Camry this year's and you would have been mm, kind of the same vehicle. Um, you know, I don't have the specs on that, but I've seen it in person. And when they told me it was the ninth generation Camry and I saw it, frankly, I was disappointed It it because it's a mid-cycle refresh at best. So if you're happy with your Accord, I wouldn't switch. Financially, that's a bad move. All right. Any updates on the Subaru Forester hybrid release? Understand Toyota has 20% share. Yeah, that is true. Um, no, N uh, Subaru has announced it, but I don't have any timetable for when it might be available. Um, I would really like to see the new Forester. The sheet metal is considerably different and it looks like they actually put some styling into it. Looks a little bit like a Ford Explorer now. So, no, um, not much information on that. Sorry, I can't help you there. Um, doo -doo -doo. You saw it in a lyric and comfortable. I'm... Yeah, um, you're talking about the lyric versus the Ionic 6. Um, I like the way the Ionic 6 drives better. I've often said that it's kind of the poor man's Porsche Taycan. Um, you know, it's literally the third, a third the price in some cases. Um, but um, yeah, it's not as comfortable. The Lyric is very comfortable. I also like sportier rides. So that is actually one of the detriments of the Lyric to me. And here's another thing, folks. I, I do own a Cadillac. I have a plug-in hybrid ELR, which is kind of a unicorn. They only made 2,800 of those. 
I'm not brand loyal. I've never been brand loyal. I've owned Fords and Mazdas and Mercury's, Pontiacs. Uh, I've owned all sorts of different vehicles, but uh, you know, I, I would buy the Lyric because um, the Lyric is a really good value. It really is. There's nothing quite like it in the luxury space. You get a really great interior, a great ride, very good range, 300 miles or so, EPA rated. It's not going to be that, but... Um, so the Lyric is, oddly enough, a very, very good value. You can get a really nicely equipped one now with Super Cruise for about $63,000, which is not cheap, but it's pretty good. That's about the range that you would spend for an, I, for an Ionic 6. Um, it's really important to shop around and sometimes shop outside of what you think you might get. You know, play the home game of what I do. Um, I drive like 90 different cars every year. Okay. Um, do I think automotive writers working for big East Coast publications actually own or even drive cars? Um, always amused. Uh, Peter, yeah, you know, almost every single automotive writer that I know owns at least one car. I know a bunch of them that own three, four, five, uh, we're, we're kind of a crazy bunch and we do love our cars. Um, I own four cars. Um, so I need to get rid of one of them at least if I'm going to be buying an EV. My wife is very patient, but I think she's, she's reaching the end of her rope. She's not a car person, so she doesn't quite understand. But yeah, a lot of auto writers really do. There's, there might be this, uh, this perception that auto writers don't own their own cars, but most that I know do, and some of them own very nice cars. Um, I'm assuming that Doug DeMiro owns lots and lots and lots of cars because he's got a lot of money. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. Hi, Brandon. Uh, what have you heard or what are your thoughts on small trucks? Ford Maverick, um, Toyota Stout. Uh, you know what? The only one that's out right now and the only one that I can speak to is the Ford Maverick, which I love the Maverick. If I was in the, the market for a pickup truck, that's probably what I would buy. The only thing I don't like about the Maverick is the hybrid version is not available with all-wheel drive. And I don't understand why Ford hasn't brought that out because that platform, which is effectively the Ford Escape, has an all-wheel drive hybrid. It has a plug-in hybrid system too. Uh, my guess is that they're selling every single one that they can make. So they really have no incentive to pump that out. Um, and you also have to remember when the Maverick first came out, that was the base model, the hybrid was, and it sold for $21,500. Um, it was a pretty good value. Um, that's switched now. The hybrid is now $5,000 more. And the EcoBoost is actually less expensive now. They've flip-flopped. Not sure how that happened, but supply and demand, I figure, is what's going on there. Um, but I like the Maverick. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's got a very basic, honest interior. Kind of why I like it. It's not everybody's thing, but works for me. Um, I have a review on it. I just recently did one. So check that out. It's a neat little truck. Um, the Toyota Stout, know absolutely nothing about it. And I don't think anybody really does. There's been rumors of it and maybe some announcements. But for now, it's got to be at least a year away. I just talked to the Toyota people. And obviously, they're not going to be talking about future product. Uh, but they, they, they don't even mention it. They don't even, they don't even bring it up. So um, we'll see. Uh, obviously, the Maverick has been very, very 
popular. And so I would be surprised if other automakers didn't come up with something like that. Uh, Moose, do I anticipate EV demand to increase, decrease, remain status quo? I think that EV sales are going to rise again, just like they did last year. And let me uh, get up on my soapbox here. There have been lots of headlines saying that EV sales have slowed and they're in decline, which is simply not true. If you look at the sales, they're, they're, it last year was the first year in America where they've sold over a million. I mean, I think demand was up by 200,000 over 2022. I don't know where those figures are coming from or why the headlines say things are slowing down. What's happening is, I believe, there are more choices. Um, you know, there's been like five or six new ones that have been put out. Also, the automakers are catching up with their production. There is no more component shortage and all. So I believe what's happening is normalcy, right? Some of these vehicles that were literally being sold off the trailer or even before they got to the dealership are now sitting on the lots for a week, maybe two, maybe three. And in some parts of the country that aren't focused on electric vehicles, and I would say that would be the Midwest, they have more of a supply of those because people in colder areas are kind of gun shy about buying an electric vehicle. So that's how I feel. I do believe demand is going to be going up. As more and more people experience EVs, I think people will buy them. I always believe buy the car that works for you. And electric vehicles don't work for everybody. But the whole thing about range anxiety and people being afraid, I think people worry a little bit too much about that. I've driven these vehicles and I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I am buying my own EV and I'm going to be doing road trips and doing all sorts of things to show that you really don't need to worry. All right, let's move on. Uh, do I think Mazda is seriously considering an electrified MX-5? Uh, I don't know. You know, Mazda, I love Mazda, but Mazda is kind of a flaky company. Um, <laughs> you know, the rotary is coming back, then it isn't. They, they, they had the, was the MX-30 that had the rotary ranging extender. I think, what did they sell? Seven of those in the United States? They need to focus. And I don't think they're doing electric very well right now. Um, being a Mazda owner and a Miata lover, uh, I, I don't see that. For one thing, the Miata is all about lightness and electric vehicles are heavy. Though having a battery pack in the floor would be great for the Miata. I mean, imagine the low center of gravity in that. But part of the joy of the Miata is a stick shift, manual transmission, and revving of the engine. I mean, it's a pure sports car. So there's the part of me that loves EVs, but the other part of me would rather not see that on the MX-5 Miata. Okay. Uh, synthetic fuel. I, I don't even get me started on synthetic fuel. Uh, Gre uh, Greg, I'm think I'm assuming that you're talking about uh, EV growth. Um, I don't have the numbers on on the the tip of my tongue, but I know that EV growth was quite a bit yesterday. So. Whenever I would see the headlines saying that EV demand is down, it would just make me go, Rah! because I'm about accuracy at the end of the day. Um, it's not that I'm loving, loving, loving EVs, although I do like them a lot. It's just accuracy. Uh, okay. What do you think about service intervals for plug-in hybrids? Just wondering if the vehicle knows to increase the service interval. Um, as far as I know, uh, as an owner of two plug-in hybrids, 
yeah, the computer tracks engine wear and duty life. Typically, the computer tells me to change the oil in my Cadillac about every two years or so. I run synthetic. In fact, um, it's you, you, you're supposed to run synthetic in them. And the same thing with my wife's Chevy Volt uh, plug-in hybrid. Um, she buys maybe two tanks of gas a year, and she just, just doesn't use the gas engine all that much. She diligently plugs in, which is what you should do with a plug-in hybrid. Um, so it really does track what's happening. We do a lot less maintenance on those vehicles. The only thing that I have really done on my Cadillac is, um, and it is now seven years old, eight years old, is uh, the heater went bad on it. And that was last year. And so the uh, the dealership, and, I, and you got to take that car to the dealership because it's such a unicorn. The dealer dug in there and uh, replaced that. That was $1,000. Not good. But you know what? If that's the only thing I've done to that vehicle in seven years, that's not too bad. Ooh, plug-in hybrids. They're so complex. There's so many things to go wrong with them. <sighs> People worry about the wrong things. Honestly, I neither of our vehicles have had any major issues. It's just that simple. You got to maintain your car properly. Uh, am I worried about bugs with the Lyric? You know what? If I bought the Lyric, that would actually be one of the things that I would be doing a video about and over the air updates and all that kind of thing. I think there are too many automotive journalists out there that don't consider the real ownership experience with a vehicle. I try to do that. It's impossible if you just have a car for a week. So again, any of these cars that I buy, a Porsche, which the service will be very expensive on that, um, the, uh, the Ionic 6, um, the Lyric, all of those, it's all about the experience. The other thing is you got to remember, it's only one vehicle. So this is very anecdotal. Um, but from what I understand... Uh, GM has really gotten the software under control with Lyric. Blazer, I think they're still working on. Apparently, they're quite different. So, um, yeah, you know, any car that's on the new side, you worry about. Um, I've had friends that have had Toyotas, and they've had trouble with them. So, um, eh, cars. Cars are unpredictable. Uh... Mazda needs to put the new inline six in the CX-50. Oh, good luck with that uh, for many different reasons, especially uh, CAFE, uh, the, the government things. I don't think it's going to happen. Would be kind of cool, though. Any info on the Subaru Outback Hybrid? No, I have not even heard of the Outback Hybrid, but Forester Hybrid I have heard of. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not happening. You got to remember, guys, um, there are hundreds of cars, and I try to keep up as much as possible on everything. And I'm going to miss things. It's just the truth. Okay. CX70, a swing and a miss. Uh... Okay. Well, you know what? I wait until I see the vehicles. It's just that simple. Um, 46 for the growth of EV sales. Yeah. I mean, EVs are selling. Um, and here's the other thing. How did EVs become a political thing? It's like, no, people, stop that. EVs are not political. EVs are a choice. It's a fuel choice. They're cheaper to operate. Um, electricity, uh, electricity in Seattle is super cheap, and I will literally save a thousand dollars a year on fueling costs. It's just that simple. Um, yeah, there's EVs have advantages. The, again, they're not for everybody, but they really do have advantages. So. 
don't buy a car because you're, you know, a Democrat or a Republican or an independent. Just buy the car that's right for you. Don't don't fall for that crap. All right. Uh, Mach E or Ionic Five? Well, Raul, uh, only you can make that choice. Um, you know, I know that Ford is adding incentives onto the Mach E. But then again, so is um, so is Hyundai, and uh, you know I think the Mach E, depending on the model, is a little bit more fun to drive. The Ionic Five has a softer, more compliant suspension. It's more for comfort. The EV6 is a firmer, sportier ride. You're really going to have to determine. Um, here, here's the thing. I will never tell anybody you should buy that car because that is stupid. I don't know your needs. I don't know your likes. Styling is very subjective. I mean, there are certain things that I look at from a technical aspect for styling, but there are a lot of people who don't like the design of the Ionic 5, that creased mid-century modern look. Um, and there are people who don't like the mach -E's design. Um, it looks like a chubby Mustang. So you're going to have to get out there and look at the vehicles and see which one is right for you. Um, and my best advice is always buy the car you love. Buy the car that when you're locking it up, you always turn around and go, damn, that's a nice looking car. Uh, you'll be more satisfied with it. You'll take care of it better you'll keep it longer. So even if it's a little bit more expensive, it's a better value, right? So sorry, I can't give you concrete advice, but uh, if you give me details about some of the things you like and don't like about that, maybe I can help you out with that. All right. My thoughts about the PF versus EV argument. Um, Oh, you know, here's the deal. I mean, there's a lot of people who are adamantly against plug-in hybrids because, oh, they're so complex. They have a gas engine and then they have the electrical. The reality is that is describing a regular Prius. It has an electrical drivetrain. It also has a gas powertrain. Um, both the Ford and the uh, Toyota hybrids have been remarkably durable. Um, the batteries last so much longer than people expect. And so if you buy a plug-in hybrid and you're plugging it in, you have that flexibility. I mean, you know, take a look at my car. Um, I have a plug-in hybrid and the range on mine is about 35 miles. And Typically now I am putting in half tanks of gas because I don't get to drive it as much. And typically I just don't use the gasoline side of the powertrain. And so if you're plugging it in, yeah, effectively you're having an EV. However, um, there are about four or five times a year where I go to uh, Southern Oregon, I go to Missoula, Montana, I go up into Canada, where I can just switch fuel sources. I don't have to worry about whether or not there's going to be an electric charge station. Um, and for people who live in a rural area, plug-in hybrids make a lot of sense because, you know, daily around, you know, your area, you can do electric. But, you know, when you need to travel long distances and in rural areas, there typically aren't as many chargers, um, then you don't have to worry. You should never buy a car and have to worry how you're going to fuel it. Um, so I think the EV versus plug-in hybrid thing is a very personal choice. I like the flexibility of a plug-in hybrid, but I also like the fact that electric vehicles, you know, they can take you up to 250 miles, easy. And most people don't need anything more than that, maybe once or twice a year. But if you plan things out ahead of time, it's really not much of an issue. And the infrastructure is growing. Uh, 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 uh. 
Moreno, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. I try not to waste people's time with my videos. Okay. Um, the 24 Tacoma sits very high for a male at 5.6. Entry and exit is a hassle. Same for the Chevy Colorado, Ford Ranger. Not everyone wants a lifted 4x4 truck. Um, Brandon, they're not going to be bringing back smaller trucks. What you're going to get is Maverick. And if Toyota brings the rumored Stout out, um, those are what you're going to get. Um, you know, if you're looking at something like Trail Boss, that is lifted. So if you're looking at the standard versions, then that's the way to go. But unfortunately, in our world, Canyon, Colorado, Tacoma, those are ranger those are small trucks who knew um you know you got to remember these mid-size pickup trucks are as large as the full-size trucks were in the 70s it's true um it's crazy um america we love our big vehicles uh let's see do, 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 do. thanks carl i appreciate it um Jim, yes, people do like to make everything political now. And you know what? I just, I won't stand for that. Um, I mean, there are basic politics that we should adhere to, like treating people with respect and all that kind of stuff. But um, I really do try not to get into politics on this channel because it's a losing proposition. Uh, da, da, da. What do I think of the Ford Maverick in the low 30s? Um, you know, at that point, I think it might be getting a little bit expensive. For me, the sweet spot is the XLT, and I like the hybrid version. Um, and you know, yeah, I think I'm just conditioned because the the hybrid used to be five thousand dollars less than it was um or five thousand dollars less than it is now and so it's it, it just seems a little bit a little bit high for me now but it is a neat little truck the thing is is that now that the maverick has been jacked up in price the hyundai santa cruz is actually kind of competitive with it and the Santa Cruz has a very refined ride. It's a very upscale vehicle. So that's another one that people should take a look at. It doesn't have a hybrid powertrain, so it's a lot less fuel efficient. But it's a neat, it's a neat vehicle. And some people prefer the sleeker, de the, the sleeker design uh, than, than the Mavericks. <laughs> Do you think Nissan will be pressured to bring out a new Xterra to market? Forerunner looks like it'll get Toyota support. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. Um, there's been a lot of pressure on, on uh, Nissan to bring out a new Xterra. And I think it's something that it needs. It already has the Frontier architecture and that's not a bad truck and if Nissan can come in with a new Xterra and undercut the uh, the new Forerunner that is only rumored at this point, but I have to believe that's going to happen. Um, although, you know, it is interesting now that Toyota has the new Land Cruiser coming out, which is a Prado in other markets. Um, I wonder what that does for the positioning of the Forerunner, because... You know, I mean, the Land Cruiser isn't going to be cheap, but how much less expensive can the Forerunner get? And I was just at a Lexus slash Toyota event, and I brought it up with the engineers, and they just, they will not discuss future product. And I get it. And, but it's interesting. I do think that Nissan would be well served to go with something like that. And, you know, they've got more electric vehicles coming out, so they'll be able to afford, uh, to afford the cafe points for a heavier, uh, less fuel efficient truck. Uh, okay. I should wait and buy the Ionic 5N. Yeah, you know, I like performance vehicles. I really do. The 5N, 
I have no place to drive that car. I really don't because I typically don't track my personal cars. Um, I don't have the insurance and I don't have the budget for tires. You know, I'm like the rest of you guys. I have budgets, you know, I have a very frugal wife too, which helps. Um, but really, honestly, uh, the thing is also, I want some range, right? Um, and you look at the Kia EV6 GT and that thing has best case scenario, like 200 miles of range on the highway. And the Lyric and the Ionic 6 and the Taycan easily are more in the 250, 260, 270 range. I need a normal car. I have a lot of cars. I don't buy normal cars. I buy two-door plug-in hybrids and uh, two-door convertibles. Um, my wife just shakes her head because every car I want is, is, is not a normal car. Uh, da, 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 da. What car do I think is the best bang for the buck? Um, you know, uh, the Kia Forte is good. Kia Soul, um, Hyundai Elantra, Chevy Trax. While I haven't tested it, every automaker that uh, or every auto writer that I run into who has driven it says, absolutely brilliant machine. You know, it's only front wheel drive, but most people only need front wheel drive. Very well equipped, $26,000, $27,000. I had the Buick N Vista. It's basically the same car with different sheet metal. Roomy car, lots of cargo space, good fuel economy. Every person that asked me about it, and a lot of people asked me about it, it just drew a lot of attention for some reason. Um, asked me how much it was. And when somebody asks me how much a car is, I always say, well, how much do you think it is? And on average, people thought it was like a $45,000 vehicle, where the one that I was driving was 29 grand. Um, so the general in the lower end market is doing really well. Their cars are quite good. And um, also the Chevy Trailblazer, same thing. Um, really nice vehicle. You can get a very well uh, equipped all wheel drive version for like 30 grand. That's pretty good. So um, those are just some off the top of my head. Um, doo -doo -doo, Santa Cruz. The problem with the Santa Cruz is that it doesn't look like a truck. You need to think outside the box, right? Not everything needs to look like what it needs to look like. Um, that's the whole thing. Something for everyone. Um, it doesn't have to look like a truck. Uh, you, you just get outside your comfort zone. That's every time I look at a vehicle, I look at it with a clean slate and try to figure out who it's marketed towards and what the engineers had to work with. So, um, yeah, there's, you know, if, if everything did what it was supposed to be, or if, if everything just did what it was supposed to do, we would never get anything new. And you have to try new things. In fact, automakers that try new things, good for them. I really love seeing that. Yeah, what's that? I'm getting a uh, thumbs up. Okay. Uh, any news on the upcoming Volvo EV SUV? Um, which one? There's the EX30 and the EX90. I am really looking forward to getting into the EX30, the small one, just because, one, I like smaller vehicles. Two, I like affordable vehicles. And three, just as I was talking about, they really thought outside the box. I think the big complaint about that vehicle is that it doesn't have any hard buttons. Everything you use goes through the touchscreen. It's one of the reasons why I personally don't care for Teslas. I know everybody says, oh, wow, they're so high tech. Um, and trust me, I am not a Luddite and I embrace technology. I use a lot of it in my life. But when I look at the Tesla touchscreen, what I'm seeing is cost savings, right? Because it costs a lot of money to run a wiring harness to a button on a dashboard. And so 
I look at Tesla and I think, you're just trying to cut costs. And they're doing that. Their, their vehicles are very well positioned in that price range. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to both of them. Um, I've owned Volvos before, uh, loved the Volvos, had a great time. One had a really horrible transmission, but the rest were great. Um, three totaled, um, and my family walked away every single time. I was never with them. Um, so uh, Volvo wagons, they, they, they quiver in fear whenever my family gets near them. Um, but yeah, uh, I like Volvos. Um, and someday I'd like to own another Volvo because I love their interiors. Um, they're just kind of expensive. Okay. Da -da. Da -da. What are the things on the wall? Uh, uh, here on the West Coast, and I don't know about the rest of the country, Chevron has uh, little, uh, little toy cars, the Chevron cars. They were uh, they were animated ads, and they produced a whole bunch of cars. Fun fact: I own every single Chevron car, every single one except for one. There was a very rare vehicle that they gave out at Disneyland at one specific event when the Autopia ride opened up, and Chevron was sponsoring that. I think they made 200 of them. It's called the Gold Dusty. And you can buy them on eBay every once in a while, but they go for like $2,000. And that would be dumb. I have other things to spend my money on. But yeah, I have all of the Chevron cars. It's just one of my life's accomplishments. Uh, da -da. Uh, looking forward to the Polestar 5. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking for, I look forward to everything. I, I do. I mean, cars are great because cars are so many different things. They're art, they're pop culture, they're politics, they're environmental, they're business, they're engineering, they're performance. And I'm just a nerd that way. I really love getting into a car and love seeing what the engineers, the designers, the accountants all came up with when they designed a car. Just simple as that. Uh, yes, Tesla does a great job of hiding cost cutting. Uh, you know what? Give Tesla credit. The whole gigacasting thing, they're coming up with new ways to produce cars. It's great. You know, Tesla, it made the electric car cool. And that's a great thing. Before that, they were just dumb kit cars. But, you know, Tesla's done a lot to advance what we are doing in the automotive space these days. If I had $20,000 to spend on a used small SUV, which would have the quickest interior, the quickest, maybe quietest interior, least, oh, least amount of road noise. Um, you know, Nelson, um, have you thought about buying a used Chevy Bolt? You can get those for $20,000. They're fast. Um, they're not quite GTI fun, but they're darn close. So that would be something that I would look at. They're fairly quiet. I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, for a little bit more, you can, like, I think for $24,000, you can get a Buick and Vista. And it comes with active noise cancellation standard. They're pretty good. Um, so you might need to spend a little bit more than $20,000, but any used vehicle, any premium brand uh, that's used around $20,000 is going to be giving you a less noisy environment. Um, yeah. Hondas, Hondas tend to have a lot of road noise. The newer ones, they've kind of made those quieter now. So good for you, Honda, finally. Uh, I've heard Porsche may be selling the Ice Macan alongside the Macan EV. Yes, that is true. I believe that is confirmed. Um, but I have not seen the uh, Macan EV, but uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, let's see. What are some of the upcoming vehicles that I'll be going on press drives in the next few months? 
I just got an invite for the Hyundai Santa Fe, the new square one. Um, I'm going on an electric sprinter event on Thursday down in Los Angeles. That actually might be next Tuesday's review. Um, I know a lot of people aren't going to be driving an electric sprinter, but for people who are doing conversions and they want an EV, that would be ideal. So those are a few of the things. I know that as far as just the vehicle that I'm getting, um, I have the, uh, let's see, the Alfa Romeo Tonale. Um, I've shot that. That's in the can. I am getting the refreshed Cadillac XT4, which is supposed to be a big improvement. We'll see. I'm getting that on Friday. Okay. We need more wagons like V90. Amen. Yes, that is true. Americans don't like wagons, though. My son, I raised him right. My son is looking at a Volvo wagon. Um, he makes a good amount of money, so good for him. Um, we'll see. Uh, uh, the M5 wagon, you know what? I didn't even know that was a thing. I know that the 5 Series is coming in wagon form, um, but I always wonder whether or not those really are coming to the United States until I actually see one in person. I I just have to say, mm, no, it's not real. It's a unicorn. Again, Americans don't like wagons for some reason, which is crazy because if you think about it, a wagon is like a low slung SUV. It's like the sports car of SUVs. Do people just not like sporty vehicles anymore? Apparently not. I love them. Okay. Hit thumbs up, everybody. The Santa Fe looks nice. You know, I've actually seen the Santa Fe. I was in Alabama recently, and I went on the assembly line at the Hyundai manufacturing plant, which was absolutely fascinating. And they were building the new version of the Santa Fe, and it looked great. Um, what's really interesting is when you go to these plants, they start the tour with these big rolls of steel that weigh 30 tons. And that steel is unspooled, stamped into sheet metal. You watch the frames being welded together. And there was a Santa Fe being screwed together. Right after that on the assembly line was a Genesis GV70, both electrified and the regular gas versions and then a Santa Cruz, and then a Tucson. They're built on the same line. Um, and they, they, they're they just one after another. And the computer just watches what's coming down the line and they use barcodes and everything gets installed perfectly. It was fascinating. If you ever get a chance, you really should go to an automotive plant and see how they're built because it's amazing. and. People say that vehicles cost too much. I don't know how they don't cost twice as much because when you look at the building and the robots and the stampings and all of the people that work to make these things, it's a wonder that every car doesn't cost $100,000. really is. Um, I need to be wrapping this up in the next five minutes because I am going out to eat. Um, I'm from the Midwest originally, Minnesota, and I'm going to have walleye for dinner tonight. Very excited about that. Maybe too excited. Uh, okay. V90 Cross Country will be my next car. Frock, I'm envious. I really am. That's a beautiful car. It really is. Wagon or not. It's a beautiful car. Uh, will I be getting the refreshed Sonata N-Line soon? I, you know, I haven't seen the refreshed Sonata yet. And I don't even know if it's out yet. Uh, sometimes, you know, even I'm kind of clueless about these things. Um, you know, I'm sort of so-so on the N-Line thing because it's just a trim package. 
I kind of feel like, look, if you're going to do end line, at least tweak the suspension a little bit. Give me a little bit of sportiness. Don't just give me a trim package. So that's how I feel about the end line stuff. It's really important for me to give a little honesty, right? In a vehicle, if it's, you know, more sporty, give me a little bit more sport, okay? Uh, the Corvette factory in Kentucky is really impressive. That's something I really want to do. Um, I've I've often thought that, you know, if I go with Lyric, I want to go to Spring Hill and watch it being built. That would be super cool. Um, plus, I hear Spring Hill is an amazing assembly factory. So we'll see. Uh, but I would like to go see the vet thing. Uh, any details on the 2024 Lincoln Nautilus? No. Um, Sorry, that's kind of off my radar screen right now. Uh, oh, I talked you into it, Frock. Uh, <laughs> boy, I wish there's a few things I wish I could talk my wife into. Actually, she's a really good sport. You are very lucky if your spouse is half as awesome as mine. She's she's a she's a treasure. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, sob. That's right around the corner, the resurrection of Saab. Um, there's a guy who has uh, a 9X in my neighborhood, and it's really cool. And uh, I talk to him all the time about it. It's really neat. Uh, oh, okay. So the Refresh Sonata is out. All right. Do you have PayPal? Yeah. Um, you don't have Venmo. Uh, I do have PayPal, but I don't know what it is. And I appreciate it. You know, the thing is, guys, I, again, I'm uncomfortable, you know, saying, hey, support the channel and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is um, I'm trying to do really, really good work. Um, you know, each one of these reviews probably takes 60 hours of work. It may not look like it, but between good photography and researching it and editing it and all that kind of stuff, it takes a lot of work. And so uh, if it works out to minimum wage that I'm getting through YouTube, I would be lucky. Um, trust me, I could be making a lot more money other places, but this is uh, a, a passion of mine. So I would love to keep doing it. Uh, Venmo is the best way because when you do super thanks, YouTube takes a cut. And I think it's like 35%, which is like, Google, are you not making enough money already? Honestly. Um, hey, Google, I want to raise. <laughs> okay. Um, YouTuber out of spec, Dave just bought an ELR. Uh, I don't, where, where is out of spec, Dave? Here's the reality. I don't watch other people's video. I, I mean, I've heard of Out of Spec Dave, but I if I bumped into him on the street, I would have no idea. Uh, I It's like, I'm busy enough watching my own, you know, producing my own videos and stuff. Plus watching other people's videos is like a busman's holiday. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I don't even like to watch TV. My wife is always like, come on, let's go. Let's watch a movie. And like, I don't want to look at another screen. Uh, uh, speaking of, I really do need to wrap it up in the next minute or two. So let me see if I can get to some of these really quick. Uh, Black Label Hybrid. Oh. You know, I do like the Lincoln vehicles, and I'm surprised that I don't see more of them around. They have absolutely beautiful interiors. They really do. Uh, yes, uh, Aaron, you can send money through YouTube, but like I ex uh, explained, they, they take a lot of it. Google, YouTube. Um, oh, Out of Space Deck is in Connecticut. Um, okay. Well, um, I don't get to Connecticut very often, and I doubt that Dave gets to Seattle very often. But you know what? He's got a plug-in hybrid. He could drive straight through without charging. That is the beauty of plug-in hybrids. Uh, okay. Most underrated car of 2023. Hmm. 
underrated car. You know, the one that just doesn't get mentioned enough is like the sporty cars. Um, people have stopped talking about v Volkswagen GTIs and Mazda Miatas. Um, and that's a shame. Um, they're great cars, you know? I mean, it's they're better than therapy. You get out and you drive those cars and you can just feel your 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 spirits lifting. They're, they're terrific vehicles. Um, you know, underrated is, is hard because everybody has so many different ideas of what a really good car is. But I do wish that more people would think outside the box and not just buy another Honda or another Toyota or another another Subaru. Uh, there are so many good vehicles out there these days. I know because I get to drive them. And it's it's really critical when they cost so much these days to get out there and drive a bunch of them before you put down 40, 50, 60 grand on one. I think you're just doing yourself a disfavor by not test driving at least three different vehicles, which has always become, it's kind of become a little bit of my tagline, you know, buy or test drive at least three different vehicles. Because if you don't, you don't know what you're missing. Um, and which is why I really love auto shows. And I'm sad to see the thought that they are going away because there is no better place to shop for a car than an auto show really, truly. Um, in an hour and a half, you can see things that you haven't seen. You can expose yourself to a bunch. You can get behind the wheel, see if it fits for you. You can get in the back seat, see if there's enough room for your friends, see if there's enough, you know, cargo room for 10 packs of Costco toilet paper, uh, all of that stuff. Um, but I, I, thoroughly believe that people don't do enough research when they're buying a new car. Um, you know, when me and the other automotive writers get together in our secret lair and talk about stuff, the one thing that we all agree on is that people, when they're doing research, they don't want information. They want validation. Um, they know what they're going to get and they just want somebody to say, oh, the Toyota Camry is a really great vehicle you know, which it is, but there are also other choices out there and something that might serve you better. Um, so if you can and you're shopping, disconnect yourself and go explore. I think uh, I'm going to see if there's anything else out there. Uh, you spent four years researching three row SUVs. Good for you. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really important. So, okay, folks, um, I have to go. I have a walleye that's waiting for me. Um, and, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, thanks again for joining me. And uh, the Lexus GX will be showing up on Thursday. Um, and I don't know if the second one is dropping on Thursday as well. It's if I can get it edited tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, um, can't say anything about it. I can't say if I like it or don't like it, um, but it sure looks cool. Um, sure looks a lot different than the other one. All right. Thanks for joining me, folks. Bye now.